mm. and uh, that doesn't sound like fun. And were you scared? What was that emotion like when you, you gave up work and you woke up one day and there you are sitting in your office, just you and maybe your partners? What was that like? Um, it's terrifying. Um, it's uh, a most uncomfortable fe feeling for, for someone who's uh, you know, been in the corporate uh, world mm. and, and, and business world for 30 years in a, in a secure style of, of, of employment. Mm. And what kind of uh, resistance did you get from family and friends? Um, I've got to say, people are generally very encouraging. Um, uh, they, uh, they're politely encouraging is probably <laughs> so the, the best way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Mark, that's a good idea. It's, it's, I heard that a lot. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk us what is the idea? What is the business of Joust? Yeah, so Joust um, uh, effectively is an online uh, auction platform for home loans. So the theory behind Joust is that good consumers um, are probably undervalued by banks. Uh, they're actually the most valuable customers a bank can get because of very low risk. Um, so we're looking to uh, create a situation where consumers with uh, good credit quality, good equity in their homes, and uh, secure employment and, and income are actually getting the most advantageous interest rate on their home loans. And we've been able to deliver that with, a, um, with the online platform being Joust. And tell me about the industry that you disrupt. Is it what we think it is? What, what do you think you're disrupting? We'd like, to, we'd like to get to a point where Joust becomes the logical way for good consumers to arrange a home loan or, or to, to, to pursue a home loan or investigate what sort of interest rate they might be able to get. So in a sense, that, that's not necessarily disruption, but we're also appealing to that consumer that's got really straightforward needs. It's not very complex and doesn't really need advice. So we expect to... To, to win market share from uh, potentially banks and mortgage brokers who might really just be extracting value from the, the middle of that value chain um, without necessarily making a lot of, uh, uh, adding a lot of value from, in terms of advice. One of the things that entrepreneurs often struggle with is finding their first customers. How did you find your first few customers? Um, well, I was interested, uh, interested to hear one of your comments earlier on. Um, we have got about, we're fortunate enough to have about 20 investors uh, in Joust, a, a lot of them South Australian, and uh, our very first tactic was uh, a family and friends email. Um, so, so word of mouth and advocacy has, has certainly, we're sure, has driven a lot of our um, early excitement and success. We've got a longer term strategy around radio and digital marketing. But uh, in terms of our first customers, I'm sure it's, uh, it's friends of our founders uh, and f relatives of our investors. Yeah, great. And what kind of challenges did you face starting up? And they could be practical things about the website or about what the partners do and who does what. What sort of practical challenges did you face starting out? I think undoubtedly, Bernadette, the, the, the biggest challenge is what you don't know. Mm. Um, and I think it's pretty important to quickly identify what your skill sets and, and areas, areas of expertise are. Um, the three of us original founders were all 50-year-old bankers, and uh, we didn't exactly have a lot of diversification in our, in our <laughs> skill sets or, or attitudes. Um, so we quickly needed to partner up with, um, uh, with Fusion Digital, a local Adelaide-based technology uh, and software agency. They brought in a lot of technology skills. Um, we needed a good lawyer uh, very early on, and uh, Adelaide-based uh, law firm Leite Morrow uh, partnered with us early on. And as the team sort of built out and, and new skill sets uh, you know, came together, we got stronger and stronger and, and, and more and more confident. Mm. And in terms of the investors coming into the business and working out what do we give them, what do we hold on to, can you talk us through some of the thinking as to what entrepreneurs should give away and what they should keep? Yeah, look, I, I, I'm sure I read somewhere in, a, in an entrepreneur handbook that you shouldn't, uh, shouldn't sell down equity until you're down to your last $10. Um, that's way too risky a, a strategy for me. I, and, and I know uh, myself and my co-founders would never like to get down to our last $10. Um, so I actually probably have a different view. And I think you've got to be, to attract investors, um, I think you should treat them generously. Um, you know, we have, a bit of a, we have a bit of a theory that better to own, uh, better to retain 20% of something that's going really well and is really promising 
than to cling on to 95% of something that might, uh, uh, might fall over or never get off the ground. Mm. And in terms of um, hiring staff, how many staff members do you have in the organisation? It's early days for us, uh, uh, Bernadette. You mentioned uh, we're, we're a, a month old or, or less than a month old. So we've only got two people working full time yeah. um, at, at the moment. We're probably looking at our third hire right now. Yeah. Um, but again, uh, early days with a startup, you don't know what you don't know. So the role descriptions yeah. or or position descriptions sort of get written on the run in terms of, yeah. well, we haven't got anyone to do this. <laughs> yeah. And so in that third person, what kind of role do you want them to take on? Look, I, again, it's, it's, about the, it's about the skill sets that we recognise that we, that we don't have uh, and, and, prior, and the priorities. Um, so I, we're expecting that the third hire will probably be, be a, a marketing style of person. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And I'm really curious about the spend of marketing because where do you put your money? So in terms of if you had, let's say... $250,000, where would you first put it? Uh, we had to build our technology platform. Um, so our, our, our first fundraising was very much earmarked to actually building our, our product um, and, and making it a quality product because we, we don't think we'll get a second go at mm. a launch. Mm. So, so our product needed to be really strong and, mm. and, and give, give customers a good user experience. Mm. So we invested heavily in that area. And now that we've gone live, um, you know, the next major spend is, is undoubtedly in marketing mm. and getting our, uh, getting our brand out there. You know, you, uh, with a new brand, you start from zero on a mm. blank page. Um, and we've had a lot of uh, the CEOs of our banks have sort of said, well, look, you might be the best thing since sliced bread, but how's anyone going to know who you are? Mm. Uh, mm. And that's sort of uh, become what we used to call our $64,000 question, mm. but it's probably more like a quarter of a million dollar question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and pitching to investors when you had these family and friends, uh, you know, what was the conversation you had? Did you bring it up? Did they bring it up? What were the, the practical elements of getting investors in? I think we've been really lucky in that, in that area, Bernadette. We tell our little story, and, and from the early days, we had a little prototype, and... I think you know these days everyone's quite excited about apps and, and mobile sort of stuff. So if you pick up your mobile phone and show someone mm. what your idea is, it's quite a visual sort of experience. And and to be fair, you know a lot of the people that we've spoken to, whether they be friends or, or introductions of friends, sometimes you can see it in their eyes. They just get the concept and and they go, "Wow, that's mm. beautifully simple." And of course, that's going to work. Mm. And they're generally the people that. Uh, um, are interested in, in potentially investing and we've, had, we've enjoyed a wonderful run in mm. terms of that, that mm. sort of response. Do you ever wake up thinking, I'm nervous, I feel sick about what the day is about to bring? Because, you, you know, it's a risk that you took. What, what are the emotions that you go through in, you know, when you wake up? I reckon in the morning is the first moment of honesty. You go, what am I doing? Um, well, again, I think in the introductory remarks, uh, you know, people that don't know what to do um, is... That is, the, the, I think, the world of startups and, and the world of entre entrepreneurs. What are we going to do today? Um, there is no rule book. Uh, and so, look, that is a really uncertain environment and it's, 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 it's quite testing and, and, yeah. and trying. Yeah. It's wonderful, Mark. I guess the reason I'm going down these tracks with Mark is because sometimes we think entrepreneurs are born successful. They're born in a way where we think, yep, they were always going to be successful. There was never any doubt. But I think what you're demonstrating is you were already successful. You took on something that was new and you wake up every morning not knowing what's going to happen. And I think that's very inspiring for other people to hear. So on that note, thank you, Mark. Thank you so much for joining right. us. Can you please give them a round of applause? Yeah.